Hey guys, and welcome back to another Design Together workshop. I'm Ahmed, and in this video, I will be talking to you about constraints. So constraints allow you to constrain elements in your frame to the frame. From the frame, by the frame, for the frame. By constraining objects, you can create responsive components that work across device sizes. So let's take a look at how constraints work. So this is the header notification component that we created in the last video on frames. And if you didn't watch it, it's just a desktop frame. Inside the desktop frame, we have a header notification frame. And inside the header notification frame, we have a text element. Now in a real world project, when you're creating a component like this header notification component, you want it to work across device sizes. So you'd want to create one component that works for desktop, mobile, and tablet. So this is what we're going to do in this video. If you were to select the text element, You'll notice that you, these blue lines appear to the left and the top of the text element here. And these are the constraints that are applied to the text element. So this text element is constrained to the left and to the top. If you go to the right panel, you'll see that it's left and top. Left horizontal constraint and top vertical constraint. And that means that your padding of 529 and 16, the left and top padding there, is always going to be maintained regardless how you resize this frame. So if I were to bring down this frame's width a bit, my left and top padding is still 529 and 16. If you were to change the horizontal constraint to right, now your right padding is always going to be maintained right and top, sorry. You can also hit command on the keyboard to ignore the constraints applied to the children elements of a frame. So if you were to, again, select the header notification frame, hold command down and drag, this ignores the constraints that are applied to the children of this frame. So let's make this header notification component work on tablet. I'm going to first add a frame for tablet, and I'm going to go with iPad mini, sure. I'm going to copy by clicking Command C. I'm gonna copy the header notification frame and paste it in the iPad mini frame. And now I'm going to change my vertical, sorry, horizontal constraint to center. And this is going to keep the text element always at the horizontal center of the header notification frame. And I'm also going to change my vertical constraint to center. So now this text element is always going to be at the center of the header notification frame. So if you were to resize this frame, my text is at the center. If I were to bring it down up, my text is always at the center of this frame. Now let's try to do this again for mobile. So I'm going to add another frame I'm going to select iPhone 11. I'm gonna again copy and paste my header notification component in the iPhone frame, bring it down. But this is a little bit too tight. Both the left and right margins are a little too small and we probably want it so that there's more space on both the left and right side, just like they look on iPad and desktop. So to do this, we're going to change the horizontal constraint to scale. I'm just gonna go Command Z first to undo what we did. And I'm gonna select my text element. I'm gonna go change this to scale. And this will break the, the text element into multiple lines if needed. So if I resize my header notification frame, now we have a more room in both our left and right margins and our text element broke into multiple lines. Hold Command down and drag this text, this uh, header notification frame to the desired space that you want. Okay, and this is the manual way to do it. Ideally, you'd wanna have auto layout applied to it so that you don't have to manually resize the header notification frame. So make sure to check out the video on auto layout to learn how you can create fully responsive components.